Hi, this is Auntie Sweets. Welcome back to the kitchen. Today we're going to be making homemade chili con carne with a homemade sofrito. So we're going to start by roasting some bell peppers, Anaheim peppers, green bell peppers, and poblano peppers. And we're going to dice up, I have about two and a half pounds of a good chuck roast here. And we're going to tenderize that after we get the peppers going on the roasting. For this amount, you're going to need three cans of beans. It's up to you. I like to mix it up. I'm going to be using red kidney beans, black beans, and pinto beans. But you can use your favorite beans. If you don't like kidney beans, do two cans of black beans. If you like cannellis, do cannellis. Whatever beans you like. So we've washed and patted dry the peppers, and we have the flames all the way up. And we're going to roast these on the range top on a gas range with the hood fan on. So apologies, this is a little difficult to hear, but we don't want to set off any smoke detectors and we do want the heat to get whisked away. And as you can hear the cracking and popping of the peppers, that's what you want. You want them to get good and blackened and you're gonna rotate them as they get blacker. Now, the safe way to do this is using tongs. Um, it's much safer than using bare hands or a good silicone glove that can withstand heat you're going to continue to roast your peppers until all sides are completely blackened and charred and then we're going to steam them in parchment paper which will make the skins easier to remove. Once all your peppers are completely charred and blackened, we're going to fold them into parchment envelopes and let them steam and cool off for about 20 minutes or an hour depending on how sensitive your hands are to heat. Once the peppers are completely charred and blackened, we're going to fold them into parchment paper. I've taken two sheets and you can simply just fold it over and make a nice little envelope to let the peppers steam. And I have two little envelopes and we're just going to let them steam for about 20 minutes to an hour. And this is going to loosen the skins and make it easier to peel under running water. To prepare our beans, you take the open cans, dump them into a colander, and you want to strain away the water liquid that the beans were canned in because this is going to make it a little bit gassy and it also just doesn't taste as good. So what you can do to get the rest of the beans out of the can is just run a little water in and shake it around and get all the beans loose and just repeat for all three cans. We've got all three cans of our beans in the colander, and we're just going to rinse and give it a different sauce to get rid of the rest of that bean juice that accumulated over them. You can buy your chuck pre-cut into cubes, or you can do it yourself. Just remember to be careful with the knife and cut against the grain and then with the grain into one inch cubes. Once you've finished cutting up your meat, make sure that you wash your hands before handling any spices or anything else. And what I'm going to do is a little trick called meat tenderizer, since we have time while we're waiting for the peppers to chill. So I'm just going to take the meat that we've cut into rough um, one-inch cubes, sprinkle with meat tenderizer with my right hand, and give it a toss with my left hand, making sure to completely coat all the meat. This is going to up the salt intake, so be a little less generous with the salt when we do the spicing of this while it's cooking. We've gone ahead and cleaned up our sink and work area with some nice cleaner disinfectant and we've put our pepper packages into the sink and we're going to unwrap them and they should be nice and cool to the touch. To remove the skins from the pepper, what you're going to do is have a gentle stream of cool water, grab a pepper, and just gently push off the charred skin with your fingers and let the running water do most of the work. Then you're going to break it open and you can simply just remove the top part with the seed. Be careful not to waste too much of the pepper and get all the chard and seeds away. And then this can go directly into the blender. We're going to need one full bulb of garlic. And what I find the easiest way to break apart the garlic is to invert it, flip it upside down, and gently take two hands rocking back and forth over the garlic. Once that's done, it'll be very easy to break the bulbs apart. Okay. 
You want to discard the center piece and all the extra flakes. Once the garlic is loose from the bulb, the easiest way that I've found to peel garlic is to actually take a knife and press it on top, being very careful of the blade. Once you've pressed the garlic underneath, you'll hear a slight crunch when it opens, and then you can simply remove the peel as such. If doing this with a knife worries you, you can do it with a blunt object, like a cup or a custard cup, and it's the same method. Simply place the bulb of garlic underneath, press, hear the crunch, and then remove the peel. Repeat until all of the individual cloves of garlic are peeled and then wash. We've prepared our tomatoes and onions and we also have a few stalks of celery and the garlic and they're going to join in the blender with the bell peppers and blenders unlike food processors need a liquid conduit in order for the blade to go so i have two cups of crushed tomatoes and we're going to put about half of that into the blender uh, sometimes the sofrito ends up doing two blenderfuls so i have a bowl to put the extra in so once we have the peppers in the blender. We're gonna go ahead and add our garlic. Three onions, we just gave a rough chop to. The blender's gonna do the work. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid securely on and give the blender a whirl. I'm just going to pulse. I'm just gonna pulse it a few times. And keep adding to the blender. We have two blender fulls of sofrito in our bowl, and it has the wonderful aroma of roasted peppers, garlic, celery, fresh tomatoes, chopped tomatoes, and onions. And this is going to be added to the meat once the meat gets a good sear, and I'm going to use the cast iron Dutch skillet to do this. I'm gonna be preparing the chili in a cast iron Dutch oven. If you don't have one, any heavy bottom sauce pot will work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pat our meat dry. Just release it from the bowl and take nice clean paper towels, give it a press and pat it dry. And the meat being dry is essential for a good sear. And what's gonna happen with the good sear is it's gonna make it more tender once it starts cooking. Something called the Maynard effect occurs when the enzymes on the outer proteins actually break down from the heat in the oil. You want to coat the bottom of your saucepan with oil, not too much, just a little bit up the sides. And then what I like to do is just run it around the edges to make sure that everything is completely coated. And we're gonna let this get hot. Um, one of the ways to know that your water is hot is to sprinkle a little bit of water in it and see if it pops. Essential when searing your meat is that you be patient, you don't flip it, you really wanna get a nice hard sear so the main artifact can completely take place. So just be careful, reach in with the spatula, and give your meat a gentle cough. You see that nice brown caramelized color? That's the main of the fact that's what we're looking for. We've got all two pounds or two and a half pounds of meat in the pot. We've reduced the flame, the meat has been seared, and now we're going to add our spices, which we want to cook a little bit to intensify the flavor before adding the sofrito. So I have paprika, ancho chili powder, cumin powder, seasoned pepper, allspice, coriander. I'm going to add one cinnamon stick and once we add the beans we're going to add some dry cilantro. Again the fresh cilantro we're reserving to the end. For the allspice and seasoned pepper I added a lot, a lot less. A little bit of allspice goes a long way and you don't want it to be too sweet tasting but it does give a little bit of a richer flavor to the meat. And so I'm just giving this a toss and letting the spices cook just a little bit before we add our sofrito. So we should have enough to completely submerge the meat. If you didn't make quite enough sofrito, you can add a little bit of chicken stock or a little bit of water or beef stock, but the goal is to have the meat completely covered by the sauce. And you just want to give it a gentle stir. I like to add bay leaves whenever I'm cooking meat. It just adds a nice flavor and um, enriches the food. So I've gone ahead and put two dry bay leaves in. We've reduced the temperature to a low simmer. There should still be small bubbles erupting. And we're going to go ahead and put a lid on this. 
and cover and cook for three to four hours, stirring every 20 to 30 minutes. And this is the low simmer we have it on. And so we're at about the 20 minute mark. So I've just opened the lid to give it a little stir. And you wanna make sure that you can still see just gentle bubbles forming. A secret to cut the acid in your chili is to add about a tablespoon of sugar. And it's not gonna be enough to make it sweet, but it will be enough to cut the acid and make the tomato just a little bit richer. Okay, so the chili's been cooking for about three hours now, and we're just going to test a piece of meat by spooning it gently onto a plate and try to cut it in half with the back of the spoon to see if it's tender. So the meat is breaking apart, no problem with the back of the spoon. It means it's nice and tender and ready to add the beans. We very carefully added the drained, rinsed beans. We're also going to add about a tablespoon of dried cilantro at this stage. And then we're going to keep the flame down low, give it a gentle stir, and cook it for another half an hour. Okay, we're going to remove the lid, gently place it down, give a final stir. Everything should be nice and tender. The beans have cooked for half an hour. Everything's perfect. Now we're just going to add our bunch of chopped cilantro into the pot it goes. Give a gentle stir. Thank you so much for joining Auntie Sweets. Please subscribe and comment below.